Black Humanator. I'm the Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing a very unique Tokusatsu miniseries, all things Ultraman Z and all things Common Rider Revice. And I do mean all things. But before we get into any of that, Buster, how has your week been? It's been average. Like, besides the Revice kerfuffle, it's been average. Yeah, I'd say about the same. Uh, like, mo- most of kerfuffles on my end have actually just been settling into the new job, which is going fairly well for anyone curious. I don't want to talk about it a whole lot on podcasts right now, because I don't want to dox myself. And also, I'm trying to keep that and YouTube stuff fairly separate. I talked about it on Components, which will be out on Friday, but basically... I like that job so much that I'm kind of full on going, yeah, I'm just not telling my coworkers I have a YouTube channel this time because that always screws <laughs> things up. Yeah. Uh. It's like, they don't know you do these podcasts and these toy reviews. It's all yeah. a mystery. Ooh. Like, I'd be willing to talk to somebody there about geeky stuff. I actually did talk to my boss about uh, Star Wars stuff on Friday, but like, that's that's as far as it would go because like, a little PSA for anybody out there who hasn't been through this yet. When you tell your coworkers that you have a YouTube channel, they're going to check it out that night. And then the next day will just be nothing. But dude, you are so different on YouTube. Oh my God, your personality is like a total 180. Why are you so different? It's because I'm trying to be on my best behavior for work, asshole. Yeah, like YouTube is like the casual, like laid back. This is how you'll see me as a friend, quote unquote. Uh, God. Uh, and then like work, I'm just like, okay, gotta put on best behavior. You know, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's it's you put on your Sunday best for work most of the time. Speaking of your Sunday best, yeah. Uh, let's get into the news. Uh, where the first thing we have up is the the one bit of Ultraman news this week, which is a uh, k- kind of a big deal though. But yeah, very because, big deal. Uh, Ultraman Z has received the 2021 Seiyun Award for Best in Media, which is a uh, a pretty big honor in Japan, as I understand it. Yeah, I mean, the last Ultra series that got this was Ultraman Tiga, which, funny enough, is getting this is the next series getting a reboot, or not next series being homaged, I mean. Mm-hmm. So... And I mean, like, if you haven't seen Zet yet, we're going to be talking about it a little more uh, towards the end of the show. But uh, Buster and I have now both seen it in full, and it's a fantastic show. So I, I really think it does deserve this award. It really does. Uh, like, honestly, it's a, it's a very good gateway, as we'll discuss. It's a very good gateway to Ultraman. And I, I can, like, it's kind of crazy that this Zet, because I, I honestly thought Zet would just mostly appeal to the American fan base because of, it was being simulcasted on YouTube. But no, it still appeals to like everyone, especially with its great effects work. It's uh it's a it's a fantastic series. But we'll talk more about that later, as I said. Uh let's go ahead and move into uh some Power Rangers and Sentai news. Uh first off, um it is uh uh the week that would have been San Diego Comic Con had it not been for the pandemic this week. So there's been a lot of toy news all around. We spent like a fuse on Very no prize this week, but uh um um, the one bit of power ring out this week is that basically you buy each individual ranger or character rather um, because Zordon is included as his own release in this. Um, and when you put them all next to each other, it makes like a command center type display, which it looks really cool in my honest opinion. I'm not a statue guy, but this is one of those rare times where I'm like, yo, if I was a statue guy, I'd probably be all over this. Yeah, and pro- it probably cost a lot. Like each of each of it's them It's $150 per statue. Ooh. So let, 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 let me math that shit real quick. Let me pull out my calculator. Yes, yeah, like 150 times eight equals too much money. Uh <laughs> Yeah, um, divided by times. That's gonna run you twelve hundred dollars for the full set. Twelve hundred? Oh, it's like twelve thousand. I think you meant. Uh, yeah, roughly a a thousand and two hundred dollars. Yep. So uh, get your life savings ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I am somewhat tempted by the Zordon, not nearly enough to actually consider buying those. But well, I don't the- like the Zordon one. I think that's the worst looking one. Really? Because I looked at it and I was like, that actually looks a fair bit better than the Lightning Collection. I mean, of course, the Lightning Collection's like one of the worst Sword on figures I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I like, sorry to be that guy, but like, I, yeah. Also, uh, these aren't in uh, 
these aren't in any scale, like any kind of regular action figure scale. They're one tenth scale, which is something I rarely ever see. So these aren't going to fit in with your lightning collection or anything like that. Yeah, very much its own display thing. Mm -hmm. And it looks good. You know, I'm, maybe if I had expendable income one day, I would get the top. I would get the Green Ranger one. Yeah, that that one does look particularly sick, especially because that's one of the uh, the ones that comes with an actual console. Yeah. Um. Oh, I just noticed. I love how they kind of painted the inner wiring detail on that one too. Yeah. But, Honestly, so. I kind of want like Hasbro to do like a play a command. I'm not sure how well play sets do in terms of toys, but like a collector command center playset. What would, would that? Be that would be a great Haslab project. Yeah, like you know, Haslab's like where they fund the bigger like Galactus like things, right? Yeah, yeah. I would love like a command center that's like two stories. Like the the top level is the classic MMPR command center. And then underneath you have a bottom level that's the power chamber from Zio. Oh, yeah, that would be neat. That that onto, would... onto things that are quote unquote less neat. <laughs> uh yeah, this is uh oh boy, I just read about this before we started recording. Um so the Cure Major Yodana special has an official release date, and also Toei has announced that there's going to be an ASMR CD set released alongside this. Really uh, trying to capitalize on the thirsty F boys. <laughs> I mean, this in, this entire package here, if if it wasn't already clear, this is this is just for dirty, dirty weebs with a with a with a punish me mommy fetish. Really? I don't uh, know, again, Udonis, she's a fun character, but uh, I feel like this is a bit much, especially because, like, uh... Just... I mean, let me... Like, there's a, there's a bunch of promotional shots uh, attached to this release date, and uh, Yodana and also the, the Red Ranger from Cure Major's Girlfriend, who is going to be in this, uh, they're both in maid outfits in all the promotional shots, and uh... Uh, let, me, let me read off the, the track listings for the a ASMR CD. Uh, Yodana's special training, Yodana's child rearing, oh Yodana's sweet scheming. Oh my Yo god, Yodana's fierce fight, Yodana's scolding, Yodana's good luck superstitions. Oh my god, uh, is that it? Is that it? Please don't be that. <laughs> that's, that that's the whole thing. It's six. Oh, tracks. thank god. <laughs> oh, phew. I think that was the most painful thing I've had to endure on a, like a VC. <laughs> Oh, it is uh it is quite the thing. Definitely not to my taste, but you know what? Uh as I've said before, last week on this podcast, uh I will never begrudge a man or woman or a non-binary person their kinks. Yeah, I, I it's not really the it's not really that it's kinky that really upsets me. It's just that sen sentai that just like it's still part of a kid show that mm. upsets me. That's like That is I, fair. Like, if, if Toei just wanted to be like, hey, let's make an original, just, like, wacky, Devil May Cry, Bayonetta-esque, like, special, like, and they had all this stuff, I would not mind. In fact, I would think it would be quite cool, but it's because it's Sentai-related, I'm just like, uh. And to, to get back to the whole point of this uh, article here, uh, the official release date is going to be on August 8th, so you can expect this to uh, show up sometime uh, subbed after that if you're... Uh, a dirty, stinking American like us, and you want to watch this? Uh, I don't think we're watching it because neither of us have finished Kira Major. So. Yeah, I, I I probably wouldn't watch this even if I had finished Kira Major, to be honest. Unless, unless you know, there's always the possibility that when I do eventually watch Kira Major, I'll I'll, I'll waifu Yodana, but I don't expect to. Yeah. Uh, speaking of girls, uh, uh, more yeah. Wholesome stuff. Um, they've announced that there is going to be a Gashapon figure of, uh, Mai, the main girl from Kamen Rider Saber. Uh, it's, it's not a, a lifelike, um, there's no real scan involved with this, but it is, uh, it's kind of anime style, and it's very cutesy. Yeah, and, like, they get, they have, like, four of her, like, funny faces from the show. Like, yeah, I, I like, love that they put in option parts on a freaking gash gash upon release. Well, like a big part of May's character is her expressions. Like her actress is very like they they do like a lot of like, funny expressions. So like of course it would kind of be like a fool's like errand to not ship a May figure without expressions. Mm, that that that's 
probably fair. Um, and uh, for anyone interested, this is going to rough run you roughly eighteen dollars USD, and uh, most uh, import sites should be taking uh, pre-orders for it by the time this podcast goes up. I'd probably get this if I o- also got a common under Blades figure because Bl- Blade Rentero and May they're kind of like you know a great duo. So okay, uh, is is it like shipping or just friends? Both. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really care for the shipping, but they have a really good dynamic. And oh god, uh, here we go. Yeah, let's let's get into the big thing. Let's get into the big thing that everybody's been talking about this week. We now have pretty much full details on Common Rider Revice, thanks to various leaks and things, because we're actually recording this episode several hours before the full press conference airs, but uh, pretty much everything we would normally get at the press conference has come out at the beginning of this past week. So uh, let's, let's just go ahead and start running down things as they appear in these articles. Um, First first, off, Revice is a lie, or at least not in the beginning of the show. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, it's actually two writers as we had been suspecting ever since we got those sticker leaks. Uh, It is common writer Revy and common writer Vice. I think Uh, it's Revy. I think they're going to do Revy, but like, okay. We'll Uh, see. And and Revy is the one who uh, who looks like trans rights, and uh, yeah. Vi- Vice is the Dino Boy. Yeah, uh, Vice is more Showa esque, while Revy is more like you know standard what you would expect a modern writer to look like. Uh huh. And uh, they're dual protagonists, and um, basically what we can uh, tell from the uh, the photos on the first article here is that uh, the default forms are dinosaur-based, and as has been kind of suspected ever since we got those blurry driver leaks, which I don't remember if we talked about on this or not. I don't think we did. And okay. like, I can still I can still barely make out what the driver looks like, so... Yeah, but basically, the gimmick this year is stamps. Yeah. Y- I mean, y- like, I, I, don't know, I can vibe. Yeah, it's it's an interesting idea. I, I hope they execute it fairly well. I hope those are fun toys. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then we have the uh, the story and the crew details for this show, which leaked out. And I'm just going to go ahead and read off the uh, the full synopsis here, and then we'll comment on it. So, yeah. uh, Common Rider Revice is the story of a young man who makes a deal with the devil. The sinister dead man cult has developed a, a device called the Vice Stamp to awaken the demons within humans, which they call dead men. Our hero is named Iki Igarashi. He strikes a bargain with the demon Vice to use the stamp power and save the world, transforming both into Common Rider Revi and Common Rider Vice. All right. Um, I like this a lot. It's kind of I middle. I love it to be honest. Yeah, I love it a lot. Yeah, because it's like, like first off, Dead Man Cult. That's just that's so Showa. I love yeah, it. Yeah, like the the whole pitch, and and they are sort of playing up the uh, the anniversary aspect with this. Because if you look at Reby's driver, uh, it's it's got a hidden fifty in it. Yeah, and um, it's also the logo makes a fifty. Yeah, and uh, like it's it's very much playing off the original Common Rider concept. Of like there being a, a secret cult that wants to do shady occultic stuff, and the hero using that power to fight against them, um, and also it, it has uh, echoes of O's, I would say, with the whole making a deal with a demon kind of thing. Yeah, although this time the demon joins the fight. Yeah, which, which is very fun. Um, and uh, getting into the cast and crew kind of stuff, uh, Iki, the the main boy, will be portrayed by Kentaro Miyada. I'm going to say is how you pronounce that. Uh, And uh, he is uh, going to be joined by the secondary vice who is voiced by Sabura Kimura. More on him later. Uh, uh, And who he is known for voicing the Seiza Blaster in Uchu Sentai Q-Ranger, if you watch that. Um, And then uh, outside the battle, he will receive support from his younger siblings, Daiji and Sakura, played by Watara Hyuga and Ayaka Imoto, respectively. The head writer of Kamen Rider Revice will be Hanata Kinoshida? Kinoshida. Uh, Kinoshida. Um, who is a newcomer to Tokusatsu. Uh, I, I, is it a man or a woman? Man. I, I, Okay, Uh, he has never written any tokusatsu before. He hasn't even written a lot of Japanese TV before. He's a novelist. 
Yeah, it oh, kind of reminds me of Ultraman G because they got a novelist for that. Mm -hmm. And like, I know there's some people who are a little worried by a newcomer, but I'm always excited about a newcomer. You got to bring in fresh blood, get new ideas every once in a while. So I'm fully open to giving this guy a shot. Yeah, um, and also uh, let's keep in mind the last two series, Zero One and Saber, were written by a uh, reoccurring common writer uh, people, and those like I like them, but like those did not like please most of the people. Uh, mm -hmm. especially later half zero one and most of Saber. So I feel like new blood is kind of needed. Uh huh. But uh, uh, not entirely going with uh, new blood. We also have a longtime Toei director and one of my personal favorite directors in all of Tokusatsu is getting his first head director job. Takeyuki Shibakashi will be directing all of Revice. I am nice. fucking hype. Like, you gotta look this guy up. I'm, directed, I'm looking him up right now. He directed the Gift episode of Juozer. He he directed the uh, the debut of Infinity Style in Common Rider Wizard. Oh, like, he directed he, the Fang Joker arc in du Double. Mm -hmm. Like, he is a guy who has directed some of the best tokusatsu episodes of, like, the last 10 to, to 12 years. Oh, he and, did the Dry Final arc. Uh-huh, and, like, he has a really good sense of how to move the camera in interesting ways and make good use of a location. Like, he he always has a moment, if he's filming in a location that we haven't seen before, he'll always try and, like, move, have the camera be moving during the fight scene to show off as much of the location as possible, and I always really appreciate that. Man, this guy's done a lot of good stuff. He did, like, the final ep He does a lot of final episodes or, like, you know, big climax, like, final form episodes. So mm -hmm. that'll be nice to see. Yeah. Um, can but, we discuss, because, uh, like, Superhero Senki's in theaters, and there's another thing related to Revice before we go into the whole debacle. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the Henshin leaked via a, a, a not that, video No, because did you see the Decade form? Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about that. Uh... I don't know if I have a link for it, but uh, yeah, there's going to be a decade form of Revice that is in Superhero Senki and possibly will be in the main series. We have no idea. Well, the thing is, apparently the rumor going around, we'll get this, uh, this is going to be kind of outdated once the episode comes out, but like the rumor going around is that each of Revice's power-ups will both be animal and dinosaur. They'll be like uh, animal or dinosaur, and they'll have a legend writer attached to it. It's not a bad idea. I'd be down for that. It kind of feels unnecessary, but uh, eh, what you gonna do? It's 50th anniversary, and it still looks cool. Yeah, as long as it's it's kept interesting and they don't flub up any cameos they may or may not be doing, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I kind of feel like we're it's a bit like too early for another cameo season. Yeah, uh, but uh, and then the last bit of uh, news uh, for Revice here is that uh, the main composer will be uh, Kotaru Nagasawa. Uh, who is a writer veteran, it says here, but this article doesn't list anything they've done, so I don't I'm immediately about, I'm looking him up right now. Okay. Uh, and uh, the press conference is going to be airing in a literal, like, five hours from when we're recording this, and the series itself begins on September 5th. Okay, he's done. Decade, Double O's, Wizard... Drive. Okay, go, go raw swag, Kino. This man makes good music. Yeah, very much. I especially love his O's soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, he, I'm I'm personally looking forward to Revice. Like, I still haven't fully warmed up to the suit designs, honestly, but everything about the story and the crew sounds really exciting to me. Yeah, um, most of, I love the aesthetics. The story sounds interesting. Should we get into the unfortunate, um... Okay, yeah. Um so to uh to kind of unload it all, uh we talked about uh v Vice's actor. Um Vice is played by if I can pull that article back up real quick. He is played by why is it not in this one? Okay, it's over here. Um Vice is played by Sabara Kimura. Uh, mm -hmm. who, as I said, voiced the Seiza Blaster, or the, the Morpher, in Uchu Sentai Q-Ranger. He's also he, done some various other anime roles. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a fairly well-traveled voice actor in Japan. He's also someone who has done blackface. And has made very racist... He's also blocked people who's called him out. Mm -hmm. Like, he... <sighs> 
Is the original post still up? Because that's something I could never get clarified when the whole thing was going down on like Monday, Tuesday last week. I don't know. Uh, I, I just, but, but you, if you look it up, you'll find pictures and stuff. We have a link to a Discord. I'll link. I'll show you basically everything. Yeah, like basically, he did a he did a literal blackface. Um, at, at like dressing up, kind of like the outfit. Kind of looks like he's trying to look like Tupac to me. I would guess. Um, and then there's a Instagram post from him where he has a whole ass pizza in his mouth and then an alternate photo of a, a African African tribesman with a with a large disc in their mouth. I don't know the exact word for that kind of uh, ornamentation, but uh yeah, this is pretty cringe, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um now we could obvious now we're both um relatively uh whitish. Um, uh you you're you're white passing, right? Yeah, like I I have Arabic roots, so mm-hmm. but like you, I am I am full on my mom my mom's side of the family is Irish, my dad's side of the family is Scottish, so I'm kind of the whitest person you can get, and on top of that, I am a cis straight male, so yeah, um, so, I am generic uh, man. Yeah, so um, what I'll say is I've been attempting to uh, amplify voices like people who actually know what they're talking about on Twitter about this. Mm-hmm. And like, let me just say that some people are not are being very weird about this, like racist. I'd argue. Um, There's people who are being really racist, and there are people who are backlashing way too hard to it. Yeah, some people are attacking like just Taka, a very well known toy seller. Please buy toys from him. Yeah, uh, Taka's a nice guy, and people are going like, "Oh, you're a racist because you're going to sell revised toys." Like, like, okay, can can I? Break this down for a second, because this is a rant I've kind of had saved up all. Sure, uh, go ahead. I will correct you if I feel like you went a bit far. Okay, here's the thing about not wanting to buy or not wanting other people to sell Revice merch because you don't want to support this actor. Toy pays their actors like shit. Yeah, you- uh... I was about to mention the royalty thing. I don't think Toy actors get royalties. No, like, he is going to get a percentage of a percentage of the toy sales in his check, and he's probably already been paid for most of his work on Revice. Like, you gotta you gotta think, they filmed this shit fairly far in advance. Mm-hmm. The dude's already got money in his pocket from this show. Like, I, I am not a... F- I'll, I'll, I'll say, I don't like that he's in the show because of this stuff, especially because he doesn't seem remorseful at all for it. Yeah, and especially since he's one of the main protagonists. Mm -hmm. However, like, trying to get Toei to fire him at this point, I think is a bit of a wasted effort, because just the way Kamen Rider and the production schedule works, I don't see it happening, which is really unfortunate, but it's the fact of the matter and on top of that, like, if you're worried about, like, like, I saw somebody saying they really hope this doesn't end up being the year Ryder gets simulcast because they don't want to have to not support Ryder because of this guy. If you're worried about watching Ryder legally, potentially, or purchasing merch from Revice being supporting this actor, like I said, a percentage of a percentage of anything you give to Toei will go to this man. Such now, a small percentage say, that it's basically insignificant. Okay, now, um, now there's another factor we have to consider. What if he voices the toys? I don't think he's gonna, but if he does that, then I think uh, we should, uh, like, a bit backtrack on that. Yeah, I would walk it back a bit if he's voicing the driver, but from that that leaked clip from Superhero Senki, that didn't sound like the same the same voice to me. But, uh... We'll, we'll, we'll know by the time this podcast is up if I'm right about that or not. Yeah, because of the press conference. I also, um, oh, what else? I need, there's another thing I wanted to say. Um, yeah, screw, screw Super, Super, what's his name? I don't care. Uh, screw that guy. Yeah, screw Saburu. The, the, the racism is not nice, people. Don't do it. Don't do it blackface. Is. Blackface is fucking embarrassing no matter when you've done it. Yeah. Um, like, and and like I'll just I'll just say my same policy as always. If somebody deletes the shit and then posts an apology saying that they're remorseful and they try to be a better person, I am all for forgiving them. But he doesn't seem to be that way. Like I said, he seemed. You said he's blocking people who are confronting him about it. 
So uh, probably not the nicest guy out there. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I, I don't, oh yeah, the thing I want to add: uh, we are Westerners and currently writers in Japan. I don't like about the whole like try to get like get some like trending and like tell Toei. Uh, yeah, I don't think we. I'm sorry, we don't have much. We're, we're just like I don't blame anyone for not watching the show. I'll be honest. Even if you're pirating, I don't blame anyone for not watching the show. Oh, oh, oh yeah. If you're gonna skip the show because of this, I won't begrudge you for it. It's just well, for all the reasons I've already explained. I'm not gonna do that, and because we we started this podcast with the intention of covering every new episode every week. Yeah, unless Revice suddenly goes to crap, but like. Oh yeah, if Revice is like ghost levels of bad, then I'll stop watching it right away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all we got. Uh, screw that guy. Don't be racist, please. And yeah. like, don't, and also don't be a prick. Don't say, oh, people are just gonna stop talking about it, because that doesn't help anyone. Oh no, that those takes were fucking, like, eye-rolling. Because like, no... The conversation has died down since this came out, and I, I have no doubt it will die down a little more going forward, but it's always going to be there in connection to this show. It's never going to fully go away. Yeah, um, and I feel like we should, like, you know, we, with this thing that does need to be talked about, like, at least mention. Like, yeah, and, and, like, I may end up liking Common Rider Vice as a character. I'm always going to say it with the asterisk of, but his actor's an asshole. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of famous characters, both in movies and television, whose actors are infamously shitty people. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's up, Black? What's up? What's up, uh, Super One? What's up, uh, frickin' Cara Dune? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, let's... Uh, so, Saber... New releases! Let's talk yeah, about Saber new releases. Yeah, Saber and Jinkai are on hiatus, so we just got the Wanker Sentai, QCO Sentai Waku Saber, episode four. Wanker Sentai... <laughs> That's gotta be the title now. But, like, we're talking mostly Ultraman later. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, uh... Yeah, this episode was fine. Uh, I don't care about Waku Saber. <laughs> it, it really does feel, like, more than any of the other episodes, this felt like minimal effort, because it's supposed to be Green's origin story, and literally all we find out is, like, yeah, he was a salary man. Yeah, it's not even, like... The yellow, yellow at least had some substance, like, or even like the parody angle was a bit more heightened. There was an attempt made with yellow and blue, I feel like. Yeah, but like, green is just we're back to like episode one of we don't care, it's just a bland. We just we just want to do something else, man. Also, here's Leotard Lady's entire ass. I completely yeah. missed. There's a there, there's like two shots where they they show her backside and like that that leotard she's wearing that's a fucking fong, dude. Bruh. Oh my god. Um, but uh, I got nothing else to say. Should we just move on to trigger? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let's go ahead and talk about. Uh, oh, you introduced the shit. Yeah, Ultraman Trigger, a new generation Tiga, episode three, the Ultra Ancient Light and Darkness. Pretty good episode, I'd say. I'd say it's a it's a slight step down from last week, but it was still really good. Yeah, I, I that's I probably what I'd say too. Uh, we got introduced to not Bosco. Uh, yeah, uh, freaking I I can't believe it's not Igus. Bosco. Yeah, yeah Igus. He's a uh, he's an interesting he's an interesting man, and also like wow, I love how we went from in in the span of two episodes we went from a love triangle to a love pentagon. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, you have freaking Kengo, Oblivious' best friend, who's probably gonna end up with Yuna. But then you have, uh, or I'm sorry, Kengo, not Kenta. Um, yeah, Ken. and uh, scientist man, whose name I just straight up don't remember. Uh, yeah. who is in love with Yuna, but she sees him as a brother. Um, uh, aren't they? Aren't they brothers and sister anyway? Uh, she said it's explained in this episode that like. Scientist man has lived with her and her father since he was little, oh. so they're like siblings. It's fucking, uh, it's Haruka and What's-Her-Face from Amazons. Ah, okay. Um, I was thinking and, more of CW Flash, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. Um, and then, uh, you also have Ingus, who is fucking perving all over Yuna this episode, going like, oh, she's a... She's a precious treasure. I yeah, want to capture really her. Well, I was really worried when Ignis first showed up. I was like, Sakamoto, lay off, lay off. Yeah, I was... 
I was worried, but then I was pretty impressed with him for having the restraint not to have any perverted shots of her. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, and then uh, freaking the uh, the the new bad guy that we're introduced to in this episode. Uh, not I can't believe it's not Basco, but the new uh, the Dark Giant. I think yeah, is what Giant they call the Dark. Him. Let me look up his name. Uh, but okay. he he wants Yuna because she is inhabiting she has the spirits of the ancient priestess who assisted trigger way back when yeah, and that we keep her. In those dreams mm-hmm. it, which feels a lot like common writer guy to me yeah I, I, oh i can you know what they, i can't see he's called hundram by the way okay uh what's scientist man's name uh let me akito akito akiko akito akito sorry okay. akito yeah yeah, let me let me say it five times fast to get it down. Akito, 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 Akito. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, no, like that whole dynamic as it was evolving in this episode was was simultaneously fascinating and terrifying because I was just like, we are one step away from me dropping this episode out of embarrassment. Dang. <laughs> I thought it was fine. Like Hundram had some really cool fighting scenes, and Sky Type was just mwah, love it. Sky Type was pretty cool. I don't feel I. I it's probably my least favorite out of the suits, but I do like the way they filmed it. Um, and then uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, sort of how we we immediately just forgo the secret identity thing with Ingus. Ingus knows who Trigger is, and he's uh, yeah. he's after him. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was that happened. Um. Sorry, I just had to mute the mic for a bit. Um. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I heard everything though. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I can. It's a fine episode. Um, yeah, Trigger's been enjoyable. Really, the, the choreography is pretty on point. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I also really enjoyed the uh, the monster design this episode. I thought that was pretty solid. Yeah, uh, what did the monster look like? He was like a he was like a big old triangle man with arms. Yeah, sorry, I watched the episode when it, like uh, the day after it premiered, so I'm like it's a bit phasey. Yeah. And I just watched it this morning before going to work, so I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat, but I, I did enjoy it. Weirdly, there's always, like, one thing from the episodes that sticks in my head all day at work. The thing that stuck in my head at work all day this week was just the, the uh, Waku Saber theme song. Oh. Like, I it kept like popping into my head at the weirdest moments. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that's not a good theme song. I mean, it's fine, but like, I, I'm not. It's, it doesn't get me hyped. It's it's really nothing. It's just a basic ass feed, um, especially yeah. for Sentai. But yeah. Uh, yeah, no trigger was good. Yeah, some cool shots. We got some cool sunlight shots. Um, you know, we all all the giants of dark. They basically just showed up at the end, saying, "We're all the giants of dark. We're all awakened." Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and also, apparently, they're after a MacGuffin. Yeah, oh, uh, that's like the Eternity Drive, I think. Yeah. Eternity and, uh, Core. Eternity Core. And uh, Daddy Warbucks is going to be looking into it. Yeah. Um. Very, like, okay, I keep saying, like, I'm very interested of in how Dark Tiga will play into this, because apparently Dark Tiga has something to do with all this, so will we get, like, a Dark Trigger? Will that be Trigger's final form, quote-unquote? Do, like, a, um, kind of like a, an almost Bebiel-style looking form? That'd be cool. Yeah, like, we already got, not, we already got that with, like, Orb, but, like, still... Yeah, like, that'd be I sick. I'd be up it. for it. Yeah, because like really, like all all of Trigger's forms are based on Tiga forms, and like mm. so, like and, and you know, didn't Tiga was, just have free forms? Yeah, so I'm like, if they want, we gotta a final sell toys. Form, yeah, if they want a final form, because I'm pretty sure Dark Trigger, Dark T- Dark Trigger, whatever it's gonna be called, is gonna be his penultimate form, and then his final form will be like last episode thing or something. He'll he'll do like a a, a Kuga. Kinda, or I could just see them like pulling like a more like a realizing hopper, mm-hmm. or uh, or freaking uh, uh, ra- rabbit uh, dragon. dragon. I mean, like yeah. the Ultraman CGI suits are pretty good, actually. So if the if the suit is all CG, they I but main example that's pointing to my mind is the Ultraman Room movie, where the final form in that movie was actually all CGI. Mm-hmm. And there was um, some good CGI in this episode. Like, I really love how the uh, the Guts Falcon looks in action. Yeah, it looks really good. And, you know, you get, like, also, I love that, like, I just love, like, in Ultraman, I'm growing to love, like, these, like, team dynamics between, like, the special agents that, like, it, it just feels so wholesome, you know? Mm-hmm. The freaking moment where I, I am really, uh, the commander was, like, the least interesting character to me last episode, but he's really starting to grow on me, especially with the moment this episode where he's like, 
I take full responsibility. Everyone back up trigger. And I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, let's go. And then like uh, the lady says Roger when like the, the, the buff guy said. Like, yeah. Yeah, just I love those moments. I, I live for that in Ultraman. Um, but yeah, this week's trigger was good. Maybe next week will probably be more interesting because this felt like we have to introduce the last of the toys and giants. Yeah. I feel like now that all the all the players are on stage, we're gonna just we're probably gonna get a couple fillers for the next few weeks, just telling stories with these characters. Yeah, I mean, Ultraman is like built on like episodic, like you know, sci-fi stories, especially Showa stuff, mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine. I'm down for that. Uh, but uh, let's go on and uh, let's go ahead and move on to the big thing. We skipped this for the last couple weeks because uh, it's it's long, and we also had a lot on our plate the last couple weeks. But yeah. Uh, well, it's it's now all out. It's only three episodes, so we decided to just do a full-on spoiler cast on High Speed Parahero Gandine this week. So it's pronounced Gandine. That's how they pronounce it in the show. So that's what I'm going with. Okay, Gandine. Um, this is a pretty cool show. It's kind of like if you combine a J drama with some common writer with the effects of Ultraman. I uh I follow a number of common writer meme pages on Facebook and and like one of them said they were watching it just by posting a screen cap of the suit and and call and um fucking captioning it uh common writer drive RX. I <laughs> What does the RX mean though? <laughs> Who knows. But uh yeah, uh it's it, it's fine, but I think it's a pretty it's a pretty good case of like a really cool concept with like the bare minimum of good execution. I feel like this is like the, apparently like because at the end of the show they tease more. Yeah, like this feels like an opening arc to like a very good show, mm -hmm. or like the first movie in a trilogy. Yeah, because like honestly, like if you split it up, like the way they split it up, it kind of felt like if you put it all together, it feels like a movie. Mm -hmm. Like uh, and like, there's also very little action in this. There is so much of just getting into the nitty-gritty of being a, a para-athlete. Which it's honestly better. is fine, especially because, you know, it's this is airing right when the Olympics are happening, so... It's interesting. It's just not what I was expecting. So a lot of the time I was like, are we, are we going to see that suit again? What's going on? Yeah, actually, um, speaking of the suit, it kind of gave me Giver vibes. Yeah, it's a really cool suit. I especially love the blinking lights on the helm. Yeah, I especially love when you get po point of view shots and you see, like, uh, Sogo, because <laughs> Sogo plays this character. Uh, Don yeah, Don and, Daichi, like, like, let me go out of my way to say, Sogo's, Sogo slash Dai Daichi, Daichi? Daichi. Daichi. Yeah, yeah. Daichi's actor. I hated him in Geo. I thought he had all the charisma of a wet of a wet noodle. He has done a lot of growing in the last few years, or he just has a way better director here. Probably way better director, even though I think I like uh, So Okano. That's the actor's name in Geo. But hey, that's that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, um, like he he's really he has a really interesting performance here, especially in the first episode, um, and and an early part of the second episode where there's uh. Where he like really um, goes out for the coach he wants, and then uh, when when he first becomes the hero and he starts questioning himself, like all all that stuff was super interesting. Yeah, like I, I think the best way to view Parahero, think of it not as like it's more of the Tokusatsu is like a good side element. Like watch it for like the good athletes, like draw, like it's not like the Tokusatsu element is like not there. It's it's there. It's part of the story. But that's more of a side element to this very, like, It's a sports movie. Yeah. It's uh, kind of funny how this comes out near the Olympics and Space Jam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and, like, uh, another just kind of funny thing I noticed about this, um, are you paying attention to co to costume design aside from uh, Gandine himself in this? Oh, uh, like the villains? No, uh, like, um, fucking Coach Lady. I can't remember her name. She is uh, always wearing like, except for when they're training and she's wearing workout clothes. Um, she, she is always wearing like the baggiest fucking housewife clothes, which I just found hilarious, especially because in episode three there's a shirtless scene of Gandine, and um, I'm like, oh, they're doing they're doing the common writer thing of like allowing lonely housewives to insert themselves into this, aren't they? 
Dang. Uh, I, I don't. I, I didn't see it like that because I completely forgot that was a thing. So yeah, like that's a for, for those of you who don't know, because I don't know if we've even discussed it on this podcast before. There's a huge element to casting in Common Rider that is very much like what what do current housewives with young children find attractive? Yeah, because they're going to be watching the show with those children. Yeah, this started with Kuga, and because part of the big reason Kuga was a hit, not just for its great storytelling, but because, you know, Joe Odegiri was just so darn charming. Mm-hmm. He is a very charming man. I feel I feel perfectly comfortable saying that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I did enjoy the show. I liked, um, I liked the dad and the best friend characters. They were pretty cool. Um the support staff, I get why they're there, but like they never like fully blossomed into interesting characters. I thought. Yeah, but you know, it's it's a fun show. Uh, if you have like an hour or two to kill, I, I I'd suggest it doesn't hurt, especially to like look at what other otoku was like, especially more like J drama y story focus. I would like to show this to an actual weir- wheelchair bound person and get their take on it because like. It it definitely is trying to give representation to those kind of people, and uh, also like the choice of how he's wheelchair bound, I found interesting because they went for kind of the the tragic um ba- the tragic accident origin of he was in a car crash with his mom when he was little, and like I'd like I'd like to get the perspective on that from like somebody who's been wheelchair bound their entire life. Yeah, or just, like, you know, people who've, like, experienced that, like, you know, the coaches, or, like, you know, people, mm-hmm. because they did consult, they do have, like, cameos from, like, other, like, para-athletes. Yeah, um, like, in pretty much all the track meet scenes, all the extras are, uh, are actual para-athletes. Yeah. Um. And, but hey, you know, this is probably the best indie toku next to Dog Edgers we've covered this year, because <laughs> Girl Gun was just so bad. <laughs> it was great to have was some... pretty solid. What? Carpio Man was pretty oh, solid. Carp- I completely forgot we carp- covered Carpio Man this year. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I would put I would actually put this and Carpio Man on equal footing. Yeah. So they both actually have like similar vibe where it's like it's mostly about the drama and the wholesome story rather mm-hmm. than like the, the big action, even though the action is really good. Like I, lo- I especially love on the credits how they sh- like show you like this is how it was made of all these green screen and effect yeah. shots and stuff. Yeah, that was cool. Um, my only real like big drawback with the series, I would say, is just the score was incredibly generic, in my opinion. Yeah, it kind of felt very like Hollywood movie esque. Mm-hmm. Like it, it really felt like uh, just copyright free music dot com type stuff, but maybe like a slight level up from that. Yeah, um, but uh, that, that, that that's that's like a minor element in in comparison to the grand whole. Um, so yeah, it's a fairly solid show. I'd recommend people check it out if they haven't already. Uh, you can, there are, um, fan subs for it out there. Uh, if you know where to look, you know where to look. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, cause I did want to mention this. Uh, this is the first time in a while I've watched something on the, uh, the streaming site that we don't name on this show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my God, has that has that show been that site been overrun with ads? Oof. I mean, I use like ad block, so it detected both my ad blockers. I had to turn them off. Oof. Well, actually, like I use like an ad block browser. I'll tell you about it later. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll ask you about that after recording. But uh, yeah. that is all the new releases, and uh, we we do have some older stuff to go into this week. So uh, quite the older stuff. Uh, should we start with Zed or the toys? Uh, let's just do the toys real quick, because I don't have a whole lot to say about them here. Yeah, I, I, th- I think I know what you mean, hint, hint, wink, wink. Yeah, because, uh, um, you this week picked up your second Lightning Collection figure, which is, uh, the Dino Thunder Red Ranger, and in a classic case of figure fate, I just so happen to be, uh, working on a review of that and the Blue Ranger for this Wednesday. Yeah, I was thinking about getting the blue one, but I'm like, I'm going to wait till they make Dino Thunder yellow, if they do that. I have a feeling they'll do the full team. I I like I, I think I said towards the end of my video, I would not be surprised if Kira's going to be in the next wave they announce. And we'll, I would, I don't know for sure they'll do this, but I would love for them to do a Tommy and Zeltrax 2 pack. Ooh, that would be good, that would be good. Yeah, but like, uh, uh, for the slight time I've been fiddling around with it, 
It's fine. Um, I think I've come to a realization. I don't think I'm like a lightning legacy figure guy. I think I prefer the more like the Dino th- the Dino Fury like kid line. Yeah, because they're they're much less toys and they're more like tools for figure photography. I find which which is very geared towards my sensibilities. But I get how other people aren't that. Into. Yeah, like I, like I'm sorry, I'm a very casual toy person. Like I just like having things to pose and like play around with and fiddle with. Like the Lightning line doesn't really do that for me. Uh, and and like I'll say I don't I don't want to fully spoil my review or anything, but uh, I liked the figure on the whole. The civilian head is awful. <laughs> it's um, it, it literally, like, I think I said in my review, it looks like Joey Fatone and frickin' Vince Vaughn got, did a fusion dance and then got shoved into a blender. Um, and uh, also, the, the Tyranno staff is a big letdown, because it's missing painted detail that, that otherwise on the figure, all the painted detail you need is there. But the Tyranno staff is missing its diamonds, and oh. also there's no joints for it to fold up. So we're probably not going to be able to make the Z-Rex Blaster when and if Kira comes out. Yeah, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, we'll skip it on a little paint. That, that's a bit unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, we still have it, which is more than you can say for some Rangers. There's some Rangers in the line that didn't get their individual weapons. So I'm happy in that regard, but it's a very much like, okay, this is a compromise I'm okay with kind of happy. Yeah. Um. On the whole, I think it's a good figure. It's probably the best figure of that suit that's been made to date. So, like, if you're a big fan of that suit, I would say definitely go and pick it up. And I feel very much the same about uh, the Blue Ranger, um, except, like, uh, it's got some deco issues, but the weapon is really good. Yeah, I think, like, the Blue Ranger has the best helmet of, like, the civilian head, I meant. Yeah, uh, it, it it doesn't look a lot like Kevin Dahini, but I definitely get hints of him out of it. Yeah, and it doesn't look as, like, nightmarish as the Connor helmet. Mm-mm, which just looks nothing like James Napier. Not even just that, but it just looks so doofy and, like... <laughs> it, it, look, it looks like, uh, like Connor's uh, differently abled brother. We'll put it that way. Yeah, I don't... Uh, okay. Uh... Not a fan of that joke, but anyway. All right, um, then I apologize. Yeah. Um, should, we talk to, should we chant his name? Yes, let's chant his name. Ultraman Z. I you finally, finally finished, finished it. it. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about the whole series. Uh, yeah, so, go ahead, go off, and I'll just jump in where I feel the need to. Yeah, Ultraman Z's really good. I think it's a rivaling room for my favorite Ultraman series, and it's all on YouTube, so watch it, please. Yeah, uh, I watched the whole thing back when it was airing, and uh, it it uh, it definitely is my favorite Ultra series. Um, and uh, also, like a, a note about the YouTube re-releases because these are like re-uploads from the original broadcast. I love how in the beginning they put these little skits like between Zet and Karuki. Like, yeah, I have heard about that. I want to watch those. Yeah, uh, they're very like uh, sometimes they're very like episode oriented, like around episode. 11. 12 that are related to the plot, but you, I think they do a good job, because not every episode has, like, Zet in it, or, like, interacting with Haruki, so I think those do a good job of, like, enhancing the dynamic. Like, it kind of retroactively made the series, um, which is, is always great to see. And I do love Zet and Haruki's dynamic, like, they, they, they really do feel like partners in that kind of, like, uh, frickin' Eji and, uh, Ankh, or, uh, um, Shinosuke and Mr. Belt kind of yeah, way. Yeah, very much like Shinosuke and Mr. Belt more like, I'd say. Mm-hmm. I especially love him, like, one of my favorite scenes in the whole show is just when Zet reveals his age, and he's like, yeah, but I'm a little kid for my species. <laughs> That's great. That's great, yeah. Um, also, uh, I'm just gonna gush about the final arc. I'm just gonna skip right to the final arc, because the rest of the series, series is good. The final arc uh, made it, like, rival Rube for me. Real quick, um, how do you feel about the the thing with the the love interest character? How do you feel about that whole arc? Oh, like Yoko? Oh, yeah, that, Yoko. And it's kind of related to the final arc, right? Okay, go ahead then. Because like, I love what they did with Yoko. I like, like, I love. So basically, they like the the you, the villain is basically a virus. He basically infects different people. So he infects the like the head guy. He does some shady stuff, and then he infects Yoko, who pilots like the big robot that rivals Ultraman. And they just let the actress go ham. And it's mm-hmm. like, and it honestly raises, I know people hated that. I really like that. I feel like it raises the 
stakes. It gives like you know because the two have really good like a really good dynamic. I really didn't see it as more romantic. I really more see it as best friends. The whole show they really felt like a a sort of Japanese take on the classic Clark Kent and Lois Lane dynamic to me. Uh yeah, for me I felt like it was more like good best friends. Like <laughs> that's <laughs> which, fair. Like I don't know. Like I didn't really see much romantic in, inclination to that. But like hey, if you you see it as romantic, sure, go ahead. I mean, they um, kind of they kind of say that it's romantic without having them kiss or anything, because there's that whole thing of like, I arm wrestle every man I meet because the only man worthy of marrying me is a man who can beat me in arm wrestling, and then Haruki does that at the end of the show. Oh yeah, that's that was a thing. <laughs> Completely forgot. Um, but like even so, I felt like I, I still like I wouldn't. I don't really see romantic. I feel like the way it's written is more like best friends. Mm-hmm. Uh. I also love the scientist girl in the show. Oh, she yeah, is Yuka, freaking adorable. Yuka, uh, she's great. Um, there's not really much to say. for me. There's not much to say, but she's great in like every scene she's in. And mm-hmm. like, I love I love when she finds figures out uh, who Juggler is. That was yeah. Great. Speaking of which, about how do you feel about Juggler as somebody who actually knows him from another show? Um, well, I haven't finished Orb. Let's make that clear. <laughs> okay. So, but I, I have seen him in Orb, and, you know, he's a juggler. He's that chaotic, neutral character. I have looked up why he's there in Zed. Like, there's actually, like, it's actually related to not Ultraman Orb, but Ultraman Orb, the origin saga. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, um, yeah, you know, he's, he's a fun, chaotic the foil to Zed. Even if there wasn't, like, a reason there, I still feel like he's a great fit in the series. And, uh... I forget, had you gotten to the point where Geed shows up when you yes. dropped off originally? Yeah, I did get to uh, Geed and Zero, but we can still talk about that. But as someone who's finished Geed's, is, they were first to Ultraman. I love the, oh, that, those two episodes were so good. Oh my god. Yeah, that felt like some of the best Disney era Power Ranger team ups. Not even just that, but just it was just really good to see Geed all like there and like, you know, seeing him just all grown up and like going on adventures and just. And, and seeing him, like, his transformation is so cool. I'm not, like, too hot on the p- suit, but then again, it's, like, a replacement suit, like, Jeed, like, in the c- story. But mm-hmm. so, and I also love, like, later when, like, you know, Jeed comes back to give, like, Zet his final form, get his final form. The the, the talking Belial sword is, like, the greatest thing ever. <laughs> that is, that is one of those things where I was like, okay, I guess I just have to go with this, because that was, like, one of my first exposures to Bebiel. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really not Belial, it's more like Belial Rock, that's his name. Yeah. Like, he's more like Belial in the essence, because yeah. uh, like every villain in this show, because the entire premise of the show is that Belial's defeated, but all his remnants are scattered throughout the universe. Yeah, which is which is an interesting setup. Yeah, although it does kind of make it funny how, like, you know, G- Riku wants Belial to die, then here he is reincarnated as a... Um, he's just... Riku just walks in, and Be- Bebiel Sword is just like, what's up, bitch? Thought you'd see the last of me, huh? Yeah, just like Riku's like, oh god, here we go again. Ah, uh, yeah. Also, that the, the, the thing at the end where he's just like, I lived. That was amazing. Mm. Yeah, that was that was a that was a great reveal. Um, yeah. I, I also just I, I really love the feeling it leaves you with with Haruki going off to have space adventures and just entrusting the Earth to all his friends. That yeah. had like a, a prime wholesomeness to it. Yeah, I know some people hated it, like, but like, you know, if you actually look into the context of like him leaving, it's it's great. And besides, like, like, I got like, it's kind of the thing where like Ultraman inspires. Like, he may not be there all the time, or may not even be real, but he inspires every feel. Mm-hmm. I definitely um, agree. Yeah. So yeah, I overall love that. Uh, Final arc made it like a top. Like, it's I'm not sure if it's above or like second to root for me. <laughs> Uh, but it does have the best Ultraman theme song of all time. Uh, actually, like uh, maybe because I just listened to it too much, so much. But I think I prefer Hands from Rube. I I still need to watch Rube. I need to watch all the other New Generation shows. Yeah, uh, I'd say start with Geed, uh, especially because Geed or Orb. Start with one of those. Mm-hmm. I remember Orb was probably uh, what's the what's the one before or oh X? Yeah, um, X was the first one that got simulcasted on Crunchyroll. Yeah, X was the first one I saw people talking about, and I remember I watched the first episode at the time, and it just didn't hit for me. But uh, I I remember like people freaking out about Orb and stuff at the time, especially at the point where Juggler does the thing. What thing? There's a thing he does that's a big spoiler for the show that I'm not going to say, but I already know because of Twitter. 
Uh, okay. I have not been like I am still not done of orb, so yeah. Like, maybe we should like do an a uh, a orb watch through together at some point. Yeah, like we're just like okay, we we need to do like a thing on the show where it's just like here's some set old episodes. Let's both watch them. Discuss. Yeah. Maybe um, like like next week or something like uh, uh come, whatever. We'll we'll see. Yeah, we'll we'll work on that behind the scenes at some point, but. uh that is everything for this week. We got through it all remarkably quick. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Buster, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody uh, who you are and where they can find your stuff? What's up? I'm Buster Carp. I do videos on the internet, on <laughs> the internet, on tokusatsu and animation and or whatever I'm interested in. Sometimes it'll be Scott the Waz, and that just blows up. Who knows? Uh, please check me out on the Buster Carp YouTube channel. And, yeah, I'm going to do a video on Ultraman Z, but I'm having trouble writing it because there's only so many ways say sh- good <laughs> yeah all right well uh i am the vacuuminator a toy reviewer here on youtube uh my next review as i talked about earlier in this episode coming out tomorrow i'll be discussing the power rangers lightning collection dino thunder red and blue rangers so if you want to see my full thoughts on those go ahead and subscribe to youtube.com slash the vacuuminator t-h-e-v-a-c-u-u-m-i-n-a-t-o-r you can also follow me on twitter at the vacuuminator and instagram at the underscore vacuuminator for daily action figure photography um and and uh do me a favor also support this show on whatever platform you're listening to it on by uh giving it a follow if you're listening on youtube go ahead and give us a like give us a comment subscribe and ring the bell in order to enable notifications get every modular media show as they are released and if you want frequent updates about what's going on with those go ahead and follow us on twitter at the modular media and join our subreddit r slash modular media but that is going to do it for this week in toku we'll see you next time when we discuss that week in tokusatsu